In this video, we're going to look at how to use Agisoft Metashape to make 3D models of any kind of objects that you have taken a series of two-dimensional photographs of by structure from motion technology, uh, specifically looking at samples of rocks and minerals, but this could be applied to any type of, of object and really is scale independent. If you can take good photographs of it, which have a lot of overlap between them, then you can use this software to make a 3D model. I'm running Agisoft Metashape Pro, but the basic version will work for making 3D models of objects. Click on Help, you can see there's a check for updates, and then the About Metashape gives you the core details, and you can see that I'm running version 1.6.2. Before starting, I recommend going to Tools, and Preferences. This allows you to define whether you're going to have your GPU, your graphics processing unit, typically known as the graphics card, are you going to have that running uh, and using that, which is highly recommended, and you're also going to use the central processing unit, the CPU, at the same time. You can see that I have that ticked, so it's running both the CPU and the GPU to help with this process. I know my computer can handle that. Um, like a lot of things in Metashape, a lot of things with uh, structure for motion photogrammetry, there's, there's trial and error. It depends on your machine, it depends on the number of photographs, the size of those photographs and how long you want to take, and ultimately how high resolution a 3D model you want to make in the end. So, um, you can see from the workspace, we've got this large window, that's where the model and its components will appear as we build it. When we import photographs, they're going to be listed down here. And then the workspace over on the left is just the file tree kind of structure for how the model is built. And you can see we have the workspace, it contains one chunk and zero cameras right now. A chunk is just going to be a collection of images that were all taken at the same time of the same object and with a lot of overlap between them. So in this case, it's going to be one half of a rock sample. So if we go to chunk one to add photographs, we right click on chunk one, go to add, not to import, go add photos. You then navigate through your file structure to find your collection of photographs that you've taken um, using your camera setup. So I have them stored in 3D models local. The sample is basaltic andesite rock sample, and we're looking at the top half of that. And you can simply hit Control A. Open. That will bring in all of the photographs in that folder. I like to rename the chunk to say that that is the top half of the sample. And it's at this time that we would save, so save as. I already have a copy of this, so I'm just going to overwrite that, but I've named the file basaltic underscore andesite. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it. That's fine. And it's now saved. Saving is very fast in Metashape, unlike a lot of the processing uh, steps, which vary considerably in length. Uh, so we have a top half, so we're also going to have a bottom half. So here you can click on Add Chunk. We will rename it first as bottom half. Doesn't anything loaded in it yet, so it says zero cameras, but we can highlight that. It's important to make sure that you highlight the appropriate um, chunk that you're working on. We can also click up here. There's an icon for add photographs, so we can go to the corresponding folder, for the bottom half, and control A to select all, open, and it brings those in. You can see that the top half chunk has got 57 cameras loaded, the bottom half chunk has got 55 cameras loaded. And again, I'll save. And 
we're pretty much free from having to use the file tree now for some time. So double click on the top half, that makes it the active one. And you can see, I'll expand here, there's all the photographs. They bring in the file name that was generated by the camera. You double click on a photograph and zoom in on it. You can see the colored dots, the registration marks, and we can just click through those. And there's obviously, it takes a second or two to refresh the image each time. So now we're ready to start working with the images that we've uploaded. So we'll double click on the top half chunk that selects all the images that are within that. And then we follow a very simple workflow model all under the heading workflow. We've already added photos. So the next thing you can see that it is in black text is aligned photos and everything else is grayed out because we can't do those yet. So click on align photos and you get to choose a variety of options here. I have the value set a lot higher than the defaults, um, about one order of magnitude higher than the defaults down here. Uh, I run the accuracy at high. Um, again, I know my laptop can do this, but you can choose from uh, highest, high, medium, low, lowest. I find very little difference between highest and high other than it takes a lot more time to run on the highest with very little increase in quality. Uh, lowest is very, very quick, but is very low quality. Um, and then, like I said, the key point limit, I think the default is 40,000 or 70,000. I'm running at 250,000 um, because I know I can do that and it's going to produce a good model. So you click OK and it begins to work. Yet a um, processing screen and you can expand the details to sort of see uh, a bit more information about what is actually happening and pretty much you sit and wait at this stage. Now that the alignment is complete we can see there's been a few changes. Over in the workspace our top half chunk is 57 cameras, but it now has 25,826 points assigned. Those are the points that have been aligned with each other. If you double click in the middle, over where we can see the model, we now have a sparse point cloud that we can rotate in three dimensions. We can zoom in and out and again realign it. So zoom back out again, and one thing that's particularly useful is if you click on the camera symbol up on the toolbar, you can show the position of each labeled image. And you can see that for this chunk, I took three um, orbits, three revolutions of the sample, one more or less horizontal to it at the bottom, and then two that were more oblique each one of those is labeled and if you click on an individual photograph down in the bottom it's highlighted in the map image. We can turn the uh, image map off and if we recenter about the model and zoom in and see that what looked like a pretty opaque model is actually just made up of those 25,826 points. Uh, so when you zoom in, it is uh, very transparent. Resetting the image, go over to the workspace and expand the top half chunk. And we can say that we can see that it says cameras 57 to 57 aligned. And if we expand that, we can see each of the photographs is listed here as well. If they were not aligned, we wouldn't have a 57 to 57 value. The ones that weren't aligned would be highlighted in this list. And they would also not have the tick mark that's shown in the photographs on the photo panel.